Ryan. You're welcome. Okay, you guys ready? <laughs> oh yeah, this is kind of weird being in front of the camera. <laughs> okay, so welcome everybody. We have some people here and hopefully we have more uh, online. So welcome everybody to our first in eight months. So this is exciting. Exciting, exciting. Um, we have Sister Riley who is going to talk to us about alternate light and heat sources for emergencies. Um, so we will start. We're not going to do a song since part of us are virtual. We're going to forego the song. Um, but Sister <clears throat> Hobbs. I know. I haven't, I haven't been deterred until we get that. <laughs> I'm going to call you with it. Sister Um. And so people call me when I can't remember my name. Sister Um. <laughs> well, give us an opening prayer and bless the refreshments. And then we will turn the time over to Sister Ray. Oh, not let's love me. Excuse my demeanor. All those at home, please. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee for this day and we thank thee for Sister Huey and for the Relief Society Presidency for putting together this enrichment night for us. We look forward to all the things that Sister Riley has prepared for us, and we'd like to thank you for all the work that she's put in for this night. Please bless the nourishment. Please bless the refreshments. May they nourish our, and strengthen our bodies. And we say this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Hello. Um, no, she could just. For those who are working at home, I meant watching from home. Um, if you have comments, just type in the comment box. Thanks. Yeah. Okay. So, I have handouts, and you guys at home, if you need them, I can email them to you. Just get with Sister Huey. Um, and a lot of the notes that I'm going to be going over are just my notes, so I hope you guys can follow along easily. So, I want to start with, like, the big game players in alternate energy, um, which we have solar, pa solar panels. And there's a lot of um, upfront cost with that, and you have to have a certain amount of space per however much you need to run your household. Um, then there's there's gas generators, which is what most people know of as an alternative source for energy. But there's a lot of upfront costs. There is cost of keeping enough fuel on hand. And then if it's a long-term situation, you'll eventually run into the thing of how are you going to get fuel because most gas pumps are ran from electricity. Um, solar power generators, I have been looking at those. Those are awesome. So you just sit them out and let the sun do their thing and it powers your generator, which can then power your house. Oh. And <laughs> they can power your house, but they're also, there's upfront costs with that, but you don't have to worry about keeping fuel. You don't have to worry about the cost of running it after you purchase them in the part. When you do solar, uh, solar generators, all you have to worry about is buying the generator. You don't have to worry about fuel or anything like that. Um, yeah. Um, solar solar generators. I have I've looked online, and that's where I found most of them. But with a lot of things like that, you can check hardware stores, and anywhere that sells a gas generator should either carry them or possibly have them online for through their store. Price price points on that they they're about the same as the bigger gas generators. The price point on them they start around a thousand. Um, for the ones that are big enough to like run your whole house, where you don't have to worry, um, like with that. So they start, I would say probably around a thousand, and then they go up from there. There are some that are bigger that are built on concrete slabs that can run everything, like not just your emergency stuff. Um, and huh? Lowe's, you could check Lowe's for those. I did look on, um, I think Lowe's.com is where I found one, but I also found a bunch on Amazon, and I would compare prices before you just 
Yep. And check with Amazon too. So are these like those Tesla battery cells? That um, no, they're around? actually, what they are is they have the panels, like the ones that you can have on your roof or mm -hmm. the ones that are in your yard. They have those built on top of them. And then that powers your generator. And that's, those are pretty awesome. Can you adapt? Because we have gas I'm not sure about that. Um, that's a question for the hubby, but um, I don't know. That's an I don't know one. I didn't even think of that when I was doing notes. Um, anybody else questions? Okay. The other two things which we kind of can't, I don't think we can do here, is wind energy and water energy. Wind like the turbines, because the turbines, they take three-fourths to an acre and a half per turbine. For the big ones, the really big ones, like they have in Kansas, the huge ones. Um, smaller ones like farmers used to use, you know, the little ones, they don't take as much space, but they also don't generate as much energy because they're not getting those high winds that are up higher. A smaller one would probably only run like necessities, like refrigerator and maybe your freezer, but you wouldn't be able to like power your whole house with it. I don't think. Yeah, you could use it for something. Like if you're just using it just for one thing, then it should be fine. Um, and the water wheel, that's, I mean, you're going to have to have a year-long water that moves at enough pace to move the wheel. Um, so a lot, both of those, some of those are like, depends on where you are geographically in the country, where what's going to work. Okay, so those are the big ones. But what do you do if you can't have that? Um, there are alternate heat sources. I'm going to start with that. Um, the first thing is propane tent heaters. And those are like what we're all used to, like when we camp. If you camp in the winter, you've seen them. They're the little propane tank with the little heater thing that sits on top. That's what I grew up with anyways. And there are bigger ones that have like a regular big propane tank, but those are like for what we were talking about the other day, the canvas tents. Um, the only thing I have with those is there's a lot of information that goes back and forth on carbon monoxide poisoning with the having those kind of things in enclosed places. So I would tell anybody if you're going to use anything like that, it, you need to make your decision on whether you think it's safe or not. And that's a personal decision. But I also think that everybody, if you're going to be doing any kind of burning indoors, get a carbon monoxide detector. If you have a fireplace, gas heat, whatever, you need one of these. And you can get these at like, I got this one at Jaeger's and it was like 30 bucks. And it'll last, I think it's like 10 years. And then, and it'll tell you when it's dying, like when it needs to be replaced. Um, it uses a nine volt battery. And you should check the batteries on these. You um, should check them to make sure they're working properly once a month and change the batteries every six months on the carbon monoxide detectors. Yes, there you go. Um, Mr. Um, Mr. Heater is a popular brand for like propane stoves and for gas stoves. Um, and I've noticed I get those at Jaeger's and like Atwood's and anywhere that sells a heater is going to have a Mr. Heater something because they make electric, they make propane, they make regular natural gas heaters. Um, and they have different sizes and price points. I mean, you can get one for like 20 bucks, like for a little bitty one, all the way up to thousands. So, um, my next was a regular upright gas stoves, which is what we're, you know, if you have gas lines in your house, you have, you can have a natural gas heat. Um, with those, um, you can have natural gas or you can have propane, which the propane would require you to have the big propane tank outside the house and have to keep it filled. And also with those, the carbon monoxide detector comes in handy with that too, just just in case, because most of them have to meet EPA standards of how much carbon monoxide they put off. And so when you're looking for that, if you're buying a used one, like if you're on a budget and you're buying a used one, check the EPA standards on that model before you buy it, because some of the older ones don't meet the EPA standards and they will let off more carbon, carbon monoxide than the newer ones. Um, and a my next is fireplace. If you have a fireplace, keep it clean. Have it checked inside. Just really maintain it. 
Um, even if you're not using it as your main source of heat right now, just make sure, you know, you're checking and you're keeping it maintained because you may have to use that as your only heat source. And things build up in there and if something sparks, it's going to cause a fire and then you're going to lose your home or your life. Um, and also, if you're burning that, you need the carbon monoxide detector. <laughs> so, how often would you have to clean those? Your chimney, I think it is... You need to clean it at the beginning of every winter season because of debris that comes in, like birds bring things down in there if it's not like graded at the top. Yeah, they build nests. Dirt daubers get in there. That's what we ran into with ours was dirt daubers and wasp nests. And um, yeah, I think it's at the end, just at the beginning of the season, you need to check it. And depending upon what you're burning, like if you're burning a very sappy wet wood, which you're not really supposed to do, but if it's an emergency and you have to, um, you'll have to have it checked like during the season too, because the sap builds up and it can also catch on fire. Yeah, they're hard to find. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I would say, even if you're not using that as your main, you need to keep wood on hand. Like, and don't just cut in the winter, like when you need it, cut it in the summer and have it sitting there until winter. That way it's drier and it's going to burn more efficiently because wet wood takes a long time to start to get it to burn. And it doesn't burn at a consistent thing because of the moisture content that's in it. Um, huh? And it will smoke a lot more too. Yes. Um, wood stove, which is my favorite. Um, just because when I think of a power outage, or being without electricity and I have a total electric house, I'm like, how am I gonna feed three teenage boys? Because that's all they worry about. On a wood stove, you can feed them, you can cook on it, um, you can, it, it, it heats a larger space for a longer amount of time than like the, um, the fireplace is gonna be kind of centralized unless you have a blower, but usually the blowers are electric, so they don't work. So I have a solution for that. This is an eco fan. I got this at Tractor Supply. And so if the electric is out at my house and my blower does not work on my wood stove, this sits on top of the wood stove. And as the wood stove heats up, this heats up. And I don't know how it happens, but it turns the heat into energy and it makes the fan move. So it will blow, it's like an external blower for the wood stove. And these, this costs about $60 but we put it on top of ours the other night and it actually helped even with the regular electric blower um, and it spread the heat a little bit more evenly even upstairs in our house. So because of the way my kitchen sits, it's kind of weird. Okay, um, with your wood stoves, just make sure again with your wood, making sure it's dry because you don't want the sap buildup in the stove pipes. Um, let's see. And just make sure whenever you are um, burning wood in your house, do not use cedar. That is a big no-no. Do not use cedar. It burns too hot and it will, and it pops. So it's going to throw sparks out. And pine does too, yeah. If, especially if pine is a little bit more wet, if it's not been seasoned. And I think they say for pine, it needs to be seasoned six to 12 months before you burn it. That way it gets all the sap out and that'll help with the smoking and with the popping and the sap. Um, okay, the next fun thing, my kids love doing this. This is a space heater made out of three bricks, a terracotta pot, and a candle. It's not going to heat your whole house, but it will heat a small space. Like, if you need to keep your pipes warm in your bathroom, this will work to keep your pipes from freezing underneath the sink. Um, what it does is just a regular candle, and you just light it and put it under here, usually on a plate. That way it doesn't catch anything on fire because my boys tried to do that. Um, and then it heats the pot. And the pot, this is a clay pot. So it heats a lot like a wood stove does inside because my wood stove inside has clay bricks inside the wood stove. So as this heats up, it sends out a larger amount of heat, radiates the heat, yeah. So that is, it's good for kids to know how to do, how to, you know, figure these things out. And my boys enjoyed it, so. Uh-huh. 
Mm -hmm. Um, depends on how big your room is. I would say if you're going to do like a living, like a normal living room size, I would have two, like one on each end of the room. And if you're having, like it's an emergency situation, you're without power and you're trying to heat one room, make sure that is it is, you still want it to be ventilated, but you also want to make sure that you're keeping in as much heat as possible without keeping the fumes in from whatever you're heating it with. Um, blankets are great because that's what we did during that ice storm was blankets across our living room. Um, I also think, you know, the window, the window plastic that you winterize your house with, with the windows, that and duct tape. And then I just leave like about two inches at the top just so there's a ventilation for fresh air to come in at the top of whatever I'm trying to block off. Um, my next thing with heat is keep hot hands in your survival things or whatever you want to call it. Um, because if you are working outside and say it's snowy and it's wet and you've been out there and you are soaked, if you come close to hypothermic, and you let the blood rush back to your body too fast by warming it up, it can make your heart fail. So you can open these and put them around your body to warm the blood up slowly. And that way you don't come into any complications like that. And I know we don't have a whole lot of really, really cold weather, but just in case it's good to know. And they're good to have on hand too if you're, you have a farm and you're out working or something. Um, my other things for heat are, that's all I have for like, sources of heat, but I also think we all need to have emergency mylar blankets. And they have other ones that are bigger that I saw today. They're like 12 bucks and they have orange on the outside and then they have the mylar on the inside. And they were like big enough to fit me, her, and my husband like all around us. So they're pretty good size. Wool blankets. Yeah, they reflect the light, but they hold in the heat, right? Yeah, and they kind of heat, like the heat goes to that and then it comes right back to you. So it cycles the heat too, I think. Some of them are, I'm not sure about, I don't think this one is, no. This, cause this one's made with um, aluminized non-stretch polyester. So it's polyester, so it's probably gonna melt. Yeah. Um, the other thing is blankets. You can never have enough blankets. Wool blankets, because wool blankets, even if they get wet, they still can heat, keep you warm because they are a natural insulator. Um, they have a better heat to warmth ratio with weight, like how much they weigh, they give more warmth for their weight than regular blankets do. Um, and then hot water bottles and hot stones, which is like way back in the day. But hey, I looked on Amazon and you can buy a hot water bottle for 10 bucks. And if, if, you know, you might you never know. Those are good for aches and pains, too. So they're just good to have. Um, my other things, I have a little list of things that you need to keep on hands for, um, you know, just for those emergency type of situations. Um, you want to keep matches or some kind of lighter. We like these because the kids can't click them without holding the. Yeah, that's what we have. Um, some kind of kindling, like dry little sticks, and what'd you put in? What? Dryer lint and melted wax. Okay, so I didn't see this one when I was looking at stuff. I we use a cotton ball with um, Vaseline on it and lipstick. Okay. Um, it would smoke if you were trying to light a fire with it. It would smoke a little bit more if you were putting some kind of like lard or something on it. It would cause too much of a smoke, I would think. Yes. Um, and then I have newspapers, dryer lint inside of a toilet paper roll will also light a fire. Um, other kindling I put on there, pine needles, they're going to smoke, but they burn really fast. So if you just need to start something really fast, that will work. Um, and leaves, I wouldn't recommend doing that inside unless you have it really well ventilated because it's gonna smoke up a lot. Um, lipstick burns, yes, you can use lipstick as a fire starter. 
Yeah, thanks. My kids watched Dual Survivor, and that was on there, and they actually lit it, and it caught on fire. Is that any brand? Yeah, it doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah, cheapest. Yeah, yeah. Any brand of lipstick will catch on fire, um, which is weird. She put that on her face, but um, don't burn cloth. Cloth, like anything that is fabric, because depending upon what it's made of, it's either going to melt or it's going to smoke. Natural fibers usually smell like um, smolder and they're gonna smoke like a wool or a cotton. Um, and polyester and man-made fibers are gonna melt and they're not really gonna, yeah, and they're gonna have a fume and they're not gonna get big enough to start anything. They're just gonna smoke and melt. Um, and I have some websites on the handout, like Family Handyman, he has 10 ways to heat your home in a power outage. Um, he's, his is really good, I really liked his. It was a little bit more of a, actual information than if preppers trying to scare you kind of thing. Um, so when y'all are looking online, there's a lot of good things out there, but there's also a lot of the like really diehard preppers that are trying to scare you or just don't know what they're talking about. And then there's some that are really knowledgeable. So just make sure you're getting your information from a reliable source. Um, okay, so I'm gonna move on to how do you feed your family if you have an electric, um, all electric house. Um, we have a gas grill, which just make sure you have propane, um, your propane tank. And then you can also have a charcoal grill. Propane camp stoves are great. Uh, the propane camp stoves, yeah. Oh no, propane grill, we do it on the porch. So we cook outside because, you, yeah, it's not gonna help heat your house. The propane grill's not. Um, you can cook on your fireplace if you have cast iron, because that works really well. Um, and if you have a fire pit out back, you know, cook on your fire pit. Also, like, there's camping cooking bags, which are kind of like the MREs, but they're a little bit different. Yeah, I just thought about it when I saw it on there. And MREs, which MREs you can get online or, like, at, what did we talk about? Uh, US surplus. surplus in Fort Smith. Um, so that's, and you know, just having like things that you can warm up, like having it stock, like where you have soups and you have things that you can feed them without having to lose a lot of energy by going back and forth, or you don't have to have a lot of energy to heat up to feed them. I just saw something, because a lot of us have rice in our food storage. Mm -hmm. But rice, you know, if anybody cooks rice, you know it takes a while. It takes forever. It's got to cook for minutes, mm -hmm. and cooks, cooks, cooks. cooks. Yes, and quinoa does too. Yep, quinoa and couscous are. It's kind of like a little noodle. Yeah, they look, they look just like little balls. Of yeah. Oh, it depends on what you put on. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to move on to light sources, which is the fun part. Um, a gallon of water with a headlamp attached to it with the light turned into the water can put out more light than a flashlight in a room, in, in a small space, like one of the small flashlights. If you want to, you can turn off the light and we can see how... So, I mean, it's not going to give you like overall coverage. But if you have a couple of these, and they're like a dollar, you can get them at the Walmart for a dollar. Um, it's a headlamp. Yeah, and you just, yeah, you just put it, turn it into the, into the gallon jug and it's a light, so. Yeah, just what, yeah. Um, and this is the one that I like the most, Crisco. So, you know, they come in the little bitty ones, and then they have the ones that are about the size of my pot right here. If you put, you take a tapered candle, you cut it off to match whatever your, whatever can of Crisco you're putting it in. Oh, the size. Oh, Yeah, the height. So you'll want to match it, and then cut it off where it's going to be at the tip. So you need the tapered candles. The ones, like, are bigger at the bottom. Dollar Tree. <laughs> If you put, yeah, in the big pot, which I think, yeah, 
The six pound tub of Crisco that they have at Walmart for like $13, if you put two wicks in it, it will burn eight hours a day for 72 days. Yep. And then if you do the, the four pound tub with one wick, eight hours a day will burn for 48 days. 48 days, no, 48 days, if you burn it for eight hours every day. You, no, you cut it to the size of your can of Crisco. So you cut it here, make sure you have enough of your wick sticking up, and you stick it in there, kind of make sure you smush it down in there, and you light the candle, and then it'll burn, and that'll be a light. No, 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 you're just cutting the candle and they're sticking the whole candle in there. Right, but the, this is going to burn slower than your wax. And this soaks into the thing so it's burning off of that instead of burning it. Well, this little container was like four bucks. And how much does it do? I wrote it down. Hang on just a second. Yeah, for the it's on the thing I have it under Kent under candles down there. It tells you all of the. This is the three pound, yes, and it will burn with one wick eight hours a day for thirty six days. Yes. So why do you have to cut it? Why do you have to cut it? Because you don't want all of this on top of your Crisco. Because when this melts down, that's going to put a layer, and then you're not going to get the Crisco onto the wick like you should. Yeah. You just cut around the size that you want, and then you pop it, and then you use scissors to cut the wick that runs through the middle of the candle. You don't need this big part. So wait a minute. I'm confused. You're going to keep the wick. The wick is still inside. Okay. The wick goes all the way down to okay. the bottom. You're cutting the candle off. For, oh. And then you're getting the wick. And you're using the wick that's in the bottom it. part. So you're not cutting the whole candle, just the wax. You're taking the wax off, and then you take the, you know, just cut across it. You're cutting the top part of the wick, not the part that's in the bottom part of the candle. You're just okay. showing me. I don't know. I'll, I'll, I'll cut it and show you here in a minute. For a different one, yes. Yeah, like, so if you have one that's bigger and you only need that part for that one, use this one for your other one. And that way you're not wasting the candle. Yeah. That would be great. Yeah. I'm like, is there a remedial class for this? <laughs> Sorry, I don't explain things well. Sorry, I'm ATM. I'm special. But it's all right. But while we're waiting for that, crayons, which are good to have around anyways because they keep little kids occupied. A Crayola crayon, not the off brand one because it will not work. Really? Crayon, crayon, will burn for 15 minutes. So. Those are, my kid likes to do that at night. He'll put them on the porch. So I have colored spots on my porch. Yeah. Teenage boys, I tell you. They, they melt. They burn the top start. They just start burning, and then they go all the way down to the bottom. It takes 15 minutes from it for it to burn and melt all the wax down to the bottom of it. Nope. I leave paper on, but that's just what we do. But, I mean, you can take the paper off if you need to. Yeah, yeah, you could. Well, and I've seen some of them people taking their old crayons and melting them down and buying wicks and putting them in candle jars and making candles out of them because they don't, they're not going to smell. They're just going to smell like crayons. They're not going to have a scent, so that works as well. Awesome. Okay. Hot knives work then. Okay, so when I cut that, there's still okay. a wick in there. Right. So you have to dig out around that wick a little okay. bit, so that way you can so light it. So you're putting it. that in so there. So th yeah, this goes in there. Oh. See, there's still a. Yes, yeah, you. Yes. No, no, no. You put the whole thing in there. You just got to peel a little bit of the wax away from the wick that's in the middle. That way you can light it. I was picturing the other part. I was like, that makes no sense. Okay. <laughs> no. Yeah, so, yeah. This one right here, eight hours a day for 36 days. 
If you only burn it for eight hours a day, it'll burn for 36 days. Hmm? It starts to melt it. This might be a stupid question. But what if the Crisco's expired? I don't think it matters. It didn't say anything about that in any of the stuff. Because I looked like four different things on this one. Like there was, there's a bunch of YouTube on this. And none of them said anything. Does it matter what brand or does it have to be Crisco? Well, the only thing with the Crisco is it's got a little bit more of a metal um, container. If you get the Walmart brand, it's a cardboard container. So it would catch on fire. Yeah, it's kind of lined with foil in this one on the inside. And the great value one that I that I looked at the other day that was this size was you could smush it around in there. So it was more flimsy, which I would say would be a fire hazard. Yeah, 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 oh yeah, yeah. For like sure. Pork and beans can or something. <laughs> Actually, there is a tuna can candle thing on. Say that again. It's a tuna can candle. Okay. My redneck comes out a little bit. I'm sorry. And you put your oil. You can put Crisco in it. You can put coconut oil in it if you have that. And you have a wick. Put some oil in a tuna can and a wick. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I knew that you'd make candles down there, but I didn't know you could do this. Yep. Yep. Uh huh. And, and so the guy that did that I watched, he did that, but he used, did it in an Altoids can. Oh. So he could put the lid on it and put it like in his bag when he was hiking. Um, he said, don't use the, um, don't use coconut oil for that one because it doesn't solidify as well and it gets warm and it gets all over your stuff. So that was his, his warning on that one. But it was, that was really, it was really cool. So um, I don't know how long that one burns though. He didn't say on the videos that I watched. Um, hurricane lamps, those, like, I mean, all of our grandmas had them. And you can get them at Walmart still. And this oil and this wick will last forever. And they do have replacement wicks at Walmart and um, it's kerosene, right? No? This one's lamp oil. They don't do the kerosene ones. Okay, but they still do do make the kerosene for them. That's what my grandma always used was the kerosene ones. Mm hmm Yes. Yeah. I think Walmart is starting to get some things back because I went down the canning aisle today and they actually had jars. But no lids. Yeah. Yeah. My grandma has all of hers in her cellar and she won't part with any of them. So. Yes. The ones like the, the big ones. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I don't know what this one is. Is it the same thing? A beeswax candle that will burn for 100 hours. And it just keeps going up. That is awesome. It goes up through the hole. So it keeps burning. That is so no, I think the box, I didn't bring the paper with, but it burns for several hours. It burns for like four or five hours at a time that was that's awesome. Just that little piece. Do you know where he got this? Amazon. Amazon has good stuff. Um, the small propane camp lanterns, um, like my dad uses when he goes fishing. The, it's got the big green bottle on the bottom, and then you roll the wick up, and we use those when we do night fishing. So they have the two little bulbs on the side that you light. Mm hmm. Um, and they have powered ones too, electric ones. Yeah, yeah, and they have all the solar ones now too. You know it's dark when you need to use it. I know, right? So It'll this... be charged in oh. the day. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> you charge it in the daytime, and then you go fishing at night. 
how that works. Um, the thing with the propane lanterns, though, is um, you're going to have to make sure you have extra bottles of propane because they're not going to last near as long as the hurricane lamps um, with the, oil, the lamp oil. Uh, flashlights and headlamps are always a must whenever you're preparing for that. Downside with that is batteries because batteries run out really fast. Um, and my, I like this one. It's solar powered yard lights. You know, the ones that have a little stake and they just have the little thing. Put it, take it to stake off, put it in a mason jar, and you have a light in the house. So you get the solar powered yard lights. You take the stake part off because you know how you have to put them together before you stick them in the ground. Don't put the stake on there and stick it in a mason jar and it's a light. It kind of has the same effect as the water with the headlamp. And you can get those um, like at the end of the season, you can get them on clearance, like at Walmart and Target. And if you're on a budget, Dollar Tree always has them in the summer and in the spring. I don't know, a lot of people don't like Dollar Tree, but if you're on a budget, something is better than nothing. I love Dollar Tree. Um, and if you're running a generator and you need lights, but you're wanting really just to run your fridge to make sure your fridge and your freezer stay, Christmas lights. You can They don't pull as much power as running like big lamps and lights and stuff, but Christmas lights, it's not a lot of light, but it's going to help make it not so dark for little ones. Um, so that one works. And then I did the tuna can the, or the buddy warmer, which is what we were talking about a while ago. Um, outside lights, you know, we have the solar powered guard lights, tiki torches. If you need to light up around your house, like we have animals we have to feed, even if it's dark, um, we can light those and give us a little bit more light. I mean, we have a, what's that thing called? Yard light, the electric large yard light. Um, that we have tiki torches around the back, that way we can go out to like where our dogs and stuff are, and that way it's lit up. Plus, I mean, if it's warmer, cold, and there's bugs, the tiki keeps the bugs away too. Um, they, then they kind of work like the hurricane lamps. They have the oil in them and the wicks, and they're going to last a while because I, mean, I think we did one. We had some, and they lasted all summer, and we didn't have to refill them at all, and that's what us doing them every day. I mean, we didn't leave them on as steady amount of time every day, but when the kids had them out there, they were on. Um, other items that you're going to need if you're in a winter no power situation, sleeping bags that go to like lower temperatures than like your light sleeping bags, um, matches, a lighter, or a flint stick. Um, a weather radio is always good to have. So I'm just going to kind of go into it. Huh? The crank ones or... Um, I saw a solar powered one on there on, on Amazon, but it was really expensive. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, extra batteries, hats, gloves, scarves, and you can never have too many blankets. Um, there are some online preparedness item suppliers. As your standard, which is I was talking to Maria about the other day, it's great for bulk foods, but they also have like emergency supplies there as well, like beeswax candles that are unscented, um, which if I... If you're going to do candles, I would say get either unscented or get them all this, like your emergency candles be all the same scent. Because if you're putting five different scents in your house, like I'm really sensitive to smells, so I get migraines. So all of mine have to either be unscented or all the same smell because then mom's not going to function and then no one's going to be taken care of. So that should be lavender. No. <laughs> Vanilla is good. Okay. Vanilla is good. Vanilla is not a really strong smell, so... That one kind of mellows out and you don't have the effect of it too much. I heard something. I never thought of it before. If your power goes out and you're needing to heat an area, but you don't have this, like a small enough room, if you have a tent, you can set Put it up the in, your, yep. in your house. And yeah, set up the tent inside your house. If you wanted to do something like that, this would work in that too because right. it would hold the heat in. Put the tent up inside yeah. like the big room that you need to heat, but then if you don't have anything to heat it, big enough to heat it, and then you can put this in your tent. Just make sure it's on something, not on the tent floor. Mm -hmm. And it would heat that area. Um, the readystore.com and sosproducts.com are two good ones that I found that have like things that you actually need for preparedness. Cheaper than dirt as well. Yeah. Well, some of it. They have like wool blankets. Yeah, I think so. Yep. You can uh -huh. also buy guns and ammo and, and other things that 
you might want yeah. if the poop hits the fan. Yeah. And then Amazon.com, I, I like to go there because you can find stuff there sometimes that you can't find on other websites. And Thrive Market, that's mainly bulk items, but they do have a few um, preparedness items. Um, brick and mortar stores that I really like for things like this is Dick's Sporting Goods is really good. Um, Academy, Bass Pro, Cabela's. But don't forget to look at like Tractor Supply and Jaeger's and Sutherland's because they get random things in sometimes and it may be what you need. Like this was at the Eco Fan was at Tractor Supply. So that's, I always like to look there. Um, Lowe's and Home Depot, they're not going to have a whole lot of like your camping things. They're going to have more of like your bigger items. Um, Army surplus is great. Okay. If you don't let not having the funds um, or the budget for the biggest, best, most expensive things stop you from being prepared. Because a, my favorite quote is from Do It On A Dime, Catherine, on YouTube. Do It On A Dime. Um, it's a YouTube channel. Uh, Catherine, she always says, a done something is better than a perfect nothing. A done something is better than a perfect nothing. So as long as you're doing something, that's better than having absolutely nothing. Yeah, it's on the back page. And then my uncle was Navy. One is none and two is one. With your items, like in his bag, one item meant he didn't have it. Two items meant he had one of them. So basically it means have your go-to but have a backup and then you need a backup for your backup. And that way if plan A and B fail, you have one last thing to try. That was his, his thing. So, um, and when you're looking into things like this and you're trying to learn about all the different ways you can do this, involve your kids because they are sponges. They will pick up more than you think they do and some of the stuff you're looking into, we may not need in our lifetime, but they might. So if you teach them the knowledge now, they're going to have it, even though you think they think they're not ever going to use it. But that's what I said, too. Um, and plus, get them off the screens. Get them outside. Yep. My kids go gather sticks. So for... Um, so my last word of caution is just if you're going to burn anything inside with an open flame, get a carbon monoxide detector um, because that can kill you in your sleep and you won't even know. No smell. It's like a silence killer. And they have different ones. They have different brands. And like I say, this one was 30 bucks at Jaeger's. I think they started at 25 and went up to like 50 was the most expensive one that I saw there. Um, and you can find a lot of ticks and trips on, tips and tricks, not ticks, online. Um, but make sure you're getting your information from a reliable source. And that's, yeah. I double check it. See if you can find the same information somewhere else. Check like EPA standards and stuff, like actual websites that are not just like joeswebsite.com. You know, might not be. It has a lock if it's if it's secure. However, there are websites out there that are that have the lock, um, but are not secure. Uh, like once you go into it, the big thing that you need to look at when is if you're purchasing on 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 the internet, um, and you're at the screen that you type in your your stuff in, look for the lock, and that should mean that it is a secure site and that it is okay to type your stuff in there. Yeah, left, right in, in the address the, bar, yes. Yeah, right before the word of the website you're on. Right? I believe so. Okay. So that is what I have. And, you know, I know Dollar Tree is great. They also, Dollar Tree today, I found these are six, five hour can emergency candles. This one will burn for five hours. So, oh, no, this is this one. It's the... They had a six pack for a dollar. Um, I also like the, what are they called? The floating candles. Because it kind of does the same thing as the light because it's reflecting off of the water a little bit. Um, and then, what was the other one? 
Oh, and if you're burning just regular candles, sit them on a mirror. They have the little square mirrors at the Dollar Tree. Set them on a mirror. It's going to reflect more light or put the mirror behind it, and it'll reflect more light. And they have a 20-pack of tea lights, which don't burn for very long, but they're good to have in your bathroom. Is, yep. <laughs> but that's all I've got. Let's go shopping. But uh huh. My grandparents, they had a wood stove. We always did like chili or beans or like big pot. She'd have a big pot going all day, and that's what we would eat off in the day. On the on top of the, on wood, top stove. Of the wood stove, yeah. Mm. But I will say, oh, the eco fan will work on a gas stove too. Like if you have room for it to sit there, it'll work on that too. It doesn't have to be just on a wood stove. That's easy. I love that thing. Yeah. <laughs> My kids love it. They're like, is it working yet? Because they like to sit and watch it. <laughs> so, but that's all I've got. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, and it would put the heat through the house. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because if you like, I was preheating the oven, I could just sit it back there and it would blow warm in the house instead of. Kind of cold days when I'm done with the oven, I leave the oven door open. Uh huh. Well, and if you have a gas stove and your electric's out, turn your oven on and put that on top and blow out some warm air. That's awesome. That's a good idea. Yep. Well, thank you very much. That was very well done. Thank you. That was, I learned a lot. I'm going to go to Dollar Tree. <laughs> right? <laughs> well, I went to two today. <laughs> but you know, and I'm, a, I'm a yard sale. I'm a yard sale guru. Not, but, and I find a lot of like the candles, and I buy, I buy old used candles all the time. At you yard can sales. always melt them down. And you make can melt them down. Yeah, I got a whole, I got a little tub that I'm saving. All the I will time. say, look at the Greenwood Walmart for the hot hands, though, because for the same price as the eight pack at the I got the ten pack. Oh, that's two extra, but still two is two. Two is two. By two, you got four. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. When you find those long handles, those packages usually they're at least two, three packages. Mm -hmm. You can look through them. I've got them for both. Uh huh. Yeah. They'll mark them down. Yes. <laughs> oh, there you go. They're already broken for you. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. How many did the? Did anybody ever put any questions up there at all? No questions. Oh. All right, well, thank you very much. And thank you for those of you that came in, take an ice cream, ice cream bar home with you. <laughs> um, is, now, is this recorded that we can play it again? Or? Yeah. Okay, so it's, we could play again if people yes. didn't get to tune in. Oh, yeah. Oh, awesome. Okay. I do. And uh, she does have and handouts. I do, and I also have, if you need an email to you, because I don't know what to do, yeah. I do. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. so it'd be a good idea for all of us to check our email, go to LDS Tools and make sure our email is correct. And we and can just let me know, say, hey, I need one, please my email. Yeah, because there's a, and she did this very well. I mean, it's all bold yeah, and just organized. Just and, that was my notes in my head, and I went back and I was like, what was I talking about here? No, but it's, but it's easy to follow, and you have it bold, and so this is, this is what, four or five pages? Seven pages. Well, seven pages on the computer. So, yeah, you have a good four or five pages here, so very good. Thank you. <laughs> um, Sister Lofton, would you give us a closing prayer, please? Our gracious Heavenly Father, we are grateful to gather tonight to talk about preparedness and to be comforted in this world that we stand in. We're grateful for the spirit that's here and all that God has given to us. We pray for those that. We're not able to come, but they will feel God you love them and that they are 
needed and wanted and we are grateful for.